helping you win your week three matchup, giving you some rest of season rankings for all positions. Let us get it started. Starting off with the running backs, we got the S tier. We got Bijan Robinson, Brees Hall, Saquon Barkley, Jonathan Taylor, Jameer Gibbs, and Alvin Kamara. Bijan Robinson's looking like the second coming of LaDainian Tomlinson. The only thing that Bijan Robinson needs is to score some touchdowns. Brees Hall, as much as we do like what we're seeing out of Braylon Allen, and a lot of people are saying, hey, Braylon Allen's looking like the better running back in this New York Jets offense. Brees Hall is still getting all the goal line work and still getting a ton of passes. So we have to have Brees Hall here as the number two. Saquon Barkley playing for this Eagles offense. They've been without AJ Brown. Still very solid league winning running back in Saquon Barkley in this tier. Jonathan Taylor, Jameer Gibbs, Alvin Kamara. I like this S tier a lot and we'll have to see going forward how that continues to go. We move on to the A tier and we got a guy like a Devon A chain here starting off the tier. James Cook, after that amazing performance in week two, how does he continue it up in week three? Joe Mixon, who is battling some injuries, but like we said, this running back landscape has gotten absolutely decimated by injuries, gotten decimated by situations. Feel very good about Joe Mixon, Josh Jacobs, Kyron Williams, and Kyron Williams is one of those where he was right around this range. I still have him around this range. I've talked about the lack of pass catching options with Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua both out, and we're worried about this offensive line, but it should be a ton of volume for Kyron Williams. I don't know if it's good volume, and then rounding it out with Derrick Henry. Moving on to our B tier, we have James Conner, Travis Etienne, CMC, Jordan Mason, Kenneth Walker, and Brian Robinson Jr. I know a lot of people are saying, hey, CMC ain't going to play the rest of the season. We do have to project that he's probably going to come back somewhere around week six. And even if this has not been a great season of health for CMC, we do know that when he is on the field and he is playing, dude is the number one running back in the league. And so I have to put him here. I'm not saying that you need, like at this point, do you prefer a guy like Kenneth Walker, or Brian Robinson, or Travis Etienne over CMC? Of course you probably do because you want healthy production in your lineup, but it did have to include CMC here. Jordan Mason, of course, I think he probably will have some sort of role, but it's probably like with both these guys, the moment that one of them comes back and there's two of them, they're not going to be, of course, as elite as when there's only one of them. So give me some Jordan Mason, CMC, Kenneth Walker here in this tier. We move on to the next tier and we have the C tier. We have David Montgomery, Tony Pollard, Ramondre, who had an absolutely terrible Thursday night, Rashad White, Aaron Jones, and J.K. Dobbins. I think J.K. Dobbins has the most to gain in this tier. I think Dave Montgomery and Tony Pollard, based on the volume that we've seen from the first two weeks, you got to feel pretty comfortable and good with both of these offenses. Now, Rashad White, how is this going to continue to impact with Bucky Irving coming onto the scene? Bucky Irving had a great week one, didn't have a great week two. Rashad White, can he continue to hold him off? And then, of course, Aaron Jones. Now, moving on to the D tier, it's just a huge tier of guys here. And I feel like this is like all the healthier guys, but we did move up Braylon Allen in our overall rankings. We do have DeAndre Swift, Devin Singletary, Najee, Zach, Ryan Allens, Amir White, Javante, Jonathan Brooks, Isaiah Pacheco, because he will be coming back somewhere around week 12, but still not feeling very good about rostering Isaiah Pacheco at this point. Zach Charbonnet, Jerome Ford, Raheem Mostert, Jalen Warren, Gus Edwards, and Zeke. So that's kind of how I view the running back landscape at this current moment. But we're going to move on to wide receivers. And starting it off in the S tier for wide receivers, we got the elites. We got the C.D. Lamb, the Jamar Chase, the Monroe St. Brown, the A.J. Brown, the Justin Jefferson, the Mike Evans, and the Rasheed Rice. And I think there could be some debate here this week between any of these guys. I think you could make the argument that Amon R. St. Brown deserves to be above Jamar Chase. I think you could make the argument that even with A.J. Brown's injury and potentially going to be out this week again, so he's going to miss two weeks, going forward, A.J. Brown should be very good. They could make the argument that Justin Jefferson should be. But like I said, this is how I'm going to view in the S tier. I think it's an elite level tier. Rasheed Rice and Mike Evans have made it into this tier, especially with Tyreek Hill getting bumped down our overall rankings. You got to feel good if you got a bunch of these guys here in the S tier. We then move on to the A tier, and we got Nico Collins, Marvin Harrison Jr., Garrett Wilson, Tyree Kill, Chris Olave, Devontae Smith, and Malik Neighbors. The part that I want to address here with the A tier is the fact that Marvin Harrison Jr., after what we saw, we've kind of you drafted Marvin Harrison Jr. as an elite level fantasy football producer. He's getting here rest of the season for us. Nico Collins as the clear one. I don't, doesn't matter what Tank Dell or Stefan Diggs are doing. Nico Collins is CJ Stroud's number one go to target. We saw Garrett Wilson in the Thursday night football game. If you didn't catch that touchdown, we're probably not feeling as great about Garrett Wilson, but I do have to put him here. Tyree Kill, it's an elite level talent. But what's going to be happening with that Tua Tunga Vailoa situation? Chris Olave, Devontae Smith, and then Malik Neighbors makes it into the back end of this A tier. And I think you could maybe make the argument that Malik Neighbors should be going above Chris Olave. And you could probably make the argument too that Devontae Smith should go above Chris Olave. The part with Devontae Smith is I just think right now this elite level production that we saw in week two and that we're probably going to get in week three is just because due to AJ Brown not playing. So I just will have to see what Malik Neighbors can continue to do. He made giant strides here into the A tier. We then move to the B tier. And in the B tier, we got guys like Devontae Adams, Chris Godwin has gone shooting up the board. We got Debo Samuel, even though
though he's hurt here. And this is where we start to balance the elite level upside of guys that are currently injured and then some of the proven production that we currently have in front of us. So you might be telling me, Caleb, I would much prefer Brandon Ayuk, DK Metcalf over a guy like Debo, which is going to be fine for you. I just have these guys how I see it here in the B tier with Devontae, Chris Gowan, DK Metcalf, Brandon Ayuk, Drake London, DJ Moore. So let me know what I got wrong here in this tier. But this is currently is how I'm seeing this overall B tier. And when we move on to the C tier, it's a little bit bigger of a tier. We got Zay, we got Stefan Diggs, we got Jalen Waddle, we got George Pickens, we got JMO, we got Tank Dell, Michael Pittman Jr., and Amari Cooper. So we got a bunch of guys like a Zay Flowers who has produced, a Stefan Diggs who has produced. And then we got a guy like a Jalen Waddle sneaking in, even though we just talked about our, our dislike for this Miami Dolphins offense with no Tua. We do like Mike McDaniel and the way that they're going to be able to get him involved. We got George Pickens, who has a great connection with Justin Fields. We got Jamison Williams, Tank Dell, and we got the two veterans that honestly haven't produced up to this point and Michael Pittman Jr. and Amari Cooper. I still feel very good about the volume that they're going to be getting, but that doesn't mean that I feel, you know, incredible about what they're going to be doing from a fantasy football perspective. Like I said, it's starting to get pretty shallow in regards to the elite level guys. Like we talk about all these guys during draft time, but it is getting to be a little bit shallower. We move on to the D tier and we got Jane Daniels, Xavier Worthy, JSN, who had that massive 15 targets in week two as a full breakout game for JSN. T Higgins, who should be getting his first game of the season this week, but my man's always nursing and hamstring. So we got to put our prayers up that he can put together a full season because I was an idiot. I drafted him for the first time in like two years and definitely not paying off for me. And I'm remembering why I don't typically do this. Then we got Terry McLaurin, Brian Thomas, and Rashid Shahid. And Rashid Shahid, if he keeps this up, this Clint Kubiak led Saints offense has been absolutely dynamite. Rashid Shahid, honestly, you might be able to make the case that he should be higher up in the D tier and should be honestly in the C tier. We move on to the next tier and we got the E tier of guys. We got Calvin Ridley, Jerry, Judy, Cooper Cup, even though he's injured, Puka Nakua, who's also injured, Keenan Allen, Khalil Shakir, Deontay Johnson, and Lad McConkey. The part that I do want to address here is with these injured players, you kind of have to debate what their value is. Do I want proven production right now, or can I wait on some of this elite level production, and or are they going to be elite when they get back? I mean, we're talking about Puka Nakua not probably getting back until week seven, week eight. We got Cooper Cup, who's probably not going to be getting back until at least week six. So you're going to have to kind of put that into your overall rankings. So this is kind of where I have those values rated appropriately, because we do know when they're on the field, they're absolute league winners for you, but we hate to see them go down with injuries here early on in the season. So that's kind of been my hesitation with this. And then rounding out my wide receivers, we got the F tier with Christian Watson, Keon Coleman, Jordan Addison, who's also going to be out this week, Tyler Lockett, Christian Kirk, DeAndre Hopkins, Cortland Sutton, and Xavier Leggett going forward. And it's it's just, this is an interesting tier full of guys with full potential. Christian Kirk has fallen down so far, but this Jacksonville Jaguars offense just honestly hasn't been that good. And of course, our G tier, this is, this is like rounding out the tiers. I think you could make uh, the case that Josh Palmer, potentially with that injury, maybe should be lower. A guy like a Demarcus Robinson, I think a lot of people are getting hyped about in the fancy space. I'm not there yet, but this is kind of how I feel here in the G tier rounding out my wide receivers. And we take this and we end up moving on to our tight ends and I'm overreacting. I moved Brock Bowers all the way up to tight end one. We were talking about him as an elite level prospect all offseason getting drafted out of the University of Georgia and he has shown nothing but being elite with target share and catches and receptions and it doesn't seem like it's going to be slowing down anytime soon because he has gone up against elite level defenses. And the thing that I want to highlight here in this S tier, we got Brock Bowers and Trey McBride. Travis Kelsey, Sam Laporta, and Dalton Kincaid have all let us down significantly. So I think when we're talking, like, maybe you can make the argument that there should be like a Brock Bowers tier and then everybody else. But I do think these guys will step up. It's been slow for the tight ends. I understand that. I'm I'm getting frustrated with it too. But this is kind of how I have the S tier ranked at the current moment. When we move on to the B tier, we got a guy like a Mark Andrews, a Kyle Pitts, George Kittle, Evan Ingram, Isaiah Likely, and Mike Isecki. And this is where things start to get real interesting. We got Evan Ingram, who's dealing with the injury. We got George Kittle, who's dealing with the injury. We got Kyle Pitts, who's been pretty much touched on our bus. We got Mark Andrews, who we had a better week two, but he didn't have a really good week one. We got Isaiah Likely, who had an amazing week one, but then disappeared in week two. And then we got Mike Gusecki, who had was pretty much the best pass catcher for the Cincinnati Bengals in week two. So like I said, I think the tight ends, when we're talking about not the top tier guys, it starts to get pretty muddy pretty fast. And that's why then here in the B tier, kind of rounding out the tight end rankings, we got Dallas Goddard, Dalton Schultz, Pat Frymuth, Hunter Henry, David Njoku, even though I know he's going to be out this week again, TJ Hawkson and then Jake Ferguson, both those guys dealing with injuries, but it's been bad for tight ends. 
I thought it was going to be better. I thought this was the year to get an elite level quarterback, an elite level tight end, and that has not been the case. But when we talk about our overall quarterback rankings, not a lot has changed at the top. I mean, you still got Josh Allen, you still got Patrick Mahomes, you still got Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson. The thing for me has been Kyler Murray was behind CJ Stroud and Anthony Richardson in last week. I think at this point we can clearly put Kyler Murray ahead, and I think we're going to be talking in another week or two about Kyler Murray potentially pushing Lamar Jackson for that QB4 role rest of season. Absolutely love these top tier of guys, especially if you have one of these like a Kyler Murray or above. I mean, if you have CJ Stroud or Anthony Richardson, you're feeling good about it. I do feel really good if you have one of these elite level guys. We move on to the A tier. We got Joe Burrow, Jaden Daniels, Dak Prescott, Derek Carr, Brock Purdy, Jared Goff, and Baker Mayfield. And I understand Joe Burrow has not performed amazingly up to this point. And maybe this is a little bit of Bengals bias coming from me, but I do think you could maybe argue that Jaden Daniels should be leading off this tier. But like I said, I want to see it a few more weeks from Jaden Daniels, uh, hopefully getting this passing attack really starting to hum for the commanders. Derek Carr with that Clint Kubiak offense, absolutely rising up the boards. And we could be talking about if Derek Carr does this for a few more weeks, he's the wonder kid. Reminds me of like Dak Prescott from a few years ago, where all of a sudden we could be talking about Derek Carr leading off this A tier if this offense continues to be legit. I mean, they did it against the Dallas Cowboys last week. Ooh. Ooh, come on, guys. This this is definitely an impressive thing that we are looking forward to seeing. We move on to our B tier, and we got a guy like a Jordan Love who, Jordan Love, once he comes back from injury and he's fully healthy, I think we could easily see Jordan Love continuing to move up the board. Justin Fields, I think he's got a lock on the starting quarterback job for the Pittsburgh Steelers, which I'm super happy about. Caleb Williams, Trevor Lawrence, two number one picks, both currently kind of struggling in their respective organizations. Have them here. Justin Herbert, Matthew Stafford, and Aaron Rodgers rounding out this year. And I did want to talk about Matthew Stafford with no weapons. It feels like maybe I should even push him lower, like put Aaron Rodgers, especially how Aaron Rodgers was cooking on Thursday Night Football. I did just kind of rank these guys how I see it going the rest of the season and rounding out here in the C tier. We got Kirk Cousins, who I need to see another week of Kirk. Seemed like we got like two minute Kirk, which looked really good, but we need to see more than that. Then Geno Smith, Daniel Jones. And then I, I put Tua just down here, not because I think Tua is going to be playing at all. He There's potential that he retires, but I do just want to give it that there's a chance that Tua does come back. So if you like fantasy football, if you like rankings, if you like asking start state questions, hit that like and subscribe button. We will be going live this weekend. So I want you here in the community so I can answer and help you guys win a fantasy football championship in week three. Check out these two videos if you haven't, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.